Hi, in the last video we have expressed the Fourier series in a closed form and in this video I am going to introduce the Dirichlet kernel. We call that the partial sum of the Fourier series S n f x can be expressed in the form of the integral from negative pi to pi of d n z f x plus z d z where dz is equal to sine n plus one half of z over two pi sine one half z if z is non-zero and if z is zero it is equal to two n plus one over two pi and we call dn the Dirichlet kernel so what is the integral of dn from negative pi to pi well we see that if we let f which is equal to 1, we guess that 1 is equal to the integral of dnz from negative pi to pi. And this is how we obtain the integral of dnz. And using the, the fact that we have proven just in the last slide, we we'll get that fx is equal to the integral from negative pi to pi dnz times fx dz. So s n fx minus fx is equal to the integral from negative pi to pi of dnz times fx plus z minus fx of dz. And if the absolute value of this thing tends to zero, then the s n f will tends to f if as n tends to infinity and this is how we study the convergence of the Fourier series to the function itself and as the Dirichlet kernel is very important in studying the convergence of the Fourier series to the function itself it is uh, it is very valuable to understand the properties of the Dirichlet kernel. The first property is that dn is an even 2 pi periodic continuous function and vanishing at z equal to 2k pi over 2n plus 1 where, where absolute value of k should be smaller than or equal to n and n is a natural number and I will leave it as an exercise. The second property is that dn has a maximum of 2m plus 1 over 2 at z equal to 0 and again as it is very easy to check I will leave it as an exercise and the third is that the integral from negative pi to pi of dnz is equal to 1 and we have done this in the last slide the fourth property is the most important property the fourth property says that for all delta greater than 0, the integral from 0 to delta of the absolute value of dnz tends to infinity as n tends to infinity. And how can we prove so? Well, we compute, we compute the integral from 0 to delta of absolute value of dnz directly. And by the definition of dnz, it is equal to the integral from 0 to delta absolute value of sine n plus 1 half z over 2 pi times the absolute value of sine 1 half z and apply the change of variable t equal to n plus 1 half z it, the expression here becomes the third line and using the fact that sine sine x is smaller than or equal to x for all x which is greater than 0 we get that this stuff should be greater than or equal to the 1 over pi times the integral from 0 to m plus 1 half delta of uh, the absolute value of sine t over 2 times the 1 over 2 m plus 1 t times m plus 1 half and these two terms will cancel out to get one half and one half will cancel out with these two 
and so the bottom here will become only T. So we will uh, use a trick that we choose a uh, natural number n such that n plus 1 pi is greater than or equal to n plus 1 half delta is greater than or equal to m pi. The integral above here is greater than or equal to 1 over pi times the integral from 0 to m pi absolute value of sine t over t dt. And what is the reason that there is a greater than or equal to sine? It's because uh, absolute value t over t is greater than or equal to 0 for all t which is greater than or equal to 0. If you still think it is very confusing, you may look at this picture. Well, in, in this picture it shows what these two integrals are doing. Well, the first integral here is to compute the area right here. And the integral down there is to compute the area right here. And obviously we see that since the uh, the function inside here is greater than or equal to zero, this area will not have any cancellation and indeed it is really uh, calculating the area under the graph and therefore we see that this area should be greater than or equal to the shaded area and therefore we get that you get the greater than or equal to sign here. Next, we uh, split our integrals into uh, m parts and we split it into 1 over pi times k from 1 to m of the integral of k minus 1 pi to k, k pi of absolute value of sine t over t dt and apply the change of variable s equal to t minus k minus 1 pi to each of this splitted integral, we get that it is equal to 1 over pi times the sum from k equal to 1 up to m, the integral from 0 to pi of absolute value of sine of k minus 1 pi plus s over s plus k minus 1 pi. And we know that the absolute value of k minus 1 pi plus s is equal to absolute value of sine s. And therefore, the, uh, the, this line here will become the next line. And we are left with this s. And we want to remove it because this integral is very difficult to compute. But as the upper bound of the integration is pi, we know that s should be smaller than or equal to pi, and therefore if we, we replace s by pi here, we get a greater than or equal to sine here. And we guess that it is equal to 1 over pi times the sum from k equal to 1 up to m of the integral from 0 to pi of absolute value of sine s over k pi. And if we write a0 equal to 1 over pi squared times the integral from 0 to pi absolute value of sine s which is greater than 0, we get this line is equal to a0 times the sum from k equal to 1 up to m of 1 over k. And Remember that we have choose a uh, m such that m plus 1 pi is greater than or equal to n plus 1 half delta. So if this thing tends to infinity, then m will tends to infinity as well. And therefore, we get that this thing will tends to infinity as n tends to infinity. And the reason is that this the, the sum right here is indeed a partial sum of a harmonic series. And we know that the sum from k equal to 1 up to infinity of 
1 over k is divergent. And we are done with the proof that uh, the integral of the absolute value of uh, dn x dx from 0 to delta will tend to infinity as n tends to infinity and delta is any number which is greater than or equal to 0. And this is the end of the video about the properties of the Dirichlet kernel and I will see you in the next video.